everybody thanks for watching and just a quick reminder that the flash drive sale is still available this is probably going to be the last week for the sale but make sure you guys uh, take advantage of the sale we're going to try to keep it up a little bit longer if possible also so if you want the flash drive before your smartphone it is now available the link is in the description uh, make sure you guys go and uh, take advantage of that sale because i know a lot of people don't have that much storage to um you know it's so much space you know to put on your phone and people don't want to download. I realize there's a lot of people who use their phones to go on Workable Academy, to watch videos. And it's not, you know, that much space. And a lot of people don't want to allocate most of the space in their phone to uh, to videos or what have you. So um, make sure you guys take advantage of that sale. Again, this is probably going to be the final week that the flash drive comes with Never Pay Again membership. So after this week, it'll just be the flash drive for that price. So for this week, if you want to get Never Pay Again membership, as well as the flash drive, um, you know, have an opportunity. So make sure you guys take advantage. But yeah, everybody who asks, a lot of people who ask, so here it is, it's available now. If you have a smartphone and you want the flash drive, the flash drive is now available for your smartphone. Take advantage. Also, make sure you guys register at Mercable Academy before you buy. Before you buy, Make sure you register at Merkaba Academy first. Make sure you register. Make sure you register with whatever email you use to pay or what have you, or whatever you have in the system. Just try to make sure you register first because it's a lot easier to update your account. Uh, if you do that, then you're not waiting for your account to be updated once you uh, go ahead and pay. So now let's get into this video. Now, I've been doing this for over a decade. I've been online for a long time. You know, when I first started doing this, like I said, I didn't expect so many people to watch. Uh, I really put up there for my study group when I was in law school. Um, but yeah, I realized that, you know, over the years, it's so many religious people, Christians, Muslim, what have you, that uh, watch this channel, that subscribe to this channel, that follow me on social media. And, you know, of course, I always say, why? You know, what is the reason? And I understand a lot of people are real skeptical about their religion. A lot of people come to these sites and are on YouTube because they look for validation of what they believe in. And um, that's the thing. So one of the things I get attacked about the most is my, you know, me choosing to speak more on Christianity than anything else. So Christians that say, uh, oh, you always talk about Christianity. Why don't you talk about anything else? And Muslims will be like, yeah, you're right about Christianity. But I have videos on Islam and, you know, and every religion. I have a whole series on ancient religion. But it's one of the things that I talk about in many videos that you got to understand about where we at with Christianity. It's not hard to realize Christianity is the number one religion. It's the dominating religion. Everything that we see is mostly geared around Christianity. You know, for a long time, Islam was taboo. They would look at you like you was crazy. You would think about Islam until they started locking brothers up and niggas coming out of jail, Muslim all of a sudden. And it's like, you know, we had to accept that and we had to look into it. And now the hood is full of Muslim black men, you know, rocking the kufis and dressed up and, you know, prostration marks and everything on the forehead. And it's something we had to accept because that that's what was pushed and being pushed in the prison system. And that's a whole different thing. A lot of people don't understand that that was done by design to get more people into Islam, because, of course, we grew up Christian, you know, a lot of people grew up in Christian homes and everything was about Christianity. And a lot of people didn't really know about Islam. And we looked at the people who was Muslim as being weird. And I remember in elementary school having uh, Muslim kids and it was like, OK, elementary school was like, you look funny with that kufi on your head. Take that shit off your head. But then as we got in high school, well, in my high school, if you was Muslim, it was like, don't touch, don't fuck with the Muslims because they're going to jump you. And it was just like, you know, we begin to understand that it was a unity in Islam and um, the way it was being taught and the power behind it. And a lot of people jumped on Islam because of that. And then, of course, when people went to prison, you know, it was like, OK, well, I'm not a part of no group. Christians not walking around all big and bad in a tough group because that would be unchristian. But the Muslims are talking about unity and together and brotherhood and so on and so forth. And we're going to protect and fight for our shit. So if you're a part of that group, Islam in prison, you know, you got a support system. And no matter how big and strong you is, you ain't beating up 30 Muslims. So you can be big and strong and be all tough and stick to your ground. But if you got 30, 40 Muslims ready to attack you because you don't want to join or what have you, then it's a lot of pressure uh, for people to join Islam and to really get into that religion. We, we understand this. But 
it's not um, that I don't speak a lot on Islam. It's just there is no point, really. And if you're if you're studying religion, ancient religion, just studying Christianity, Judaism, you're going to run into Islam, one. But two, it's going to be very easy for you to disprove the religion because we understand, I mean, come on, Judaism was first. We get Christianity. Then all of a sudden we get Islam. Hmm. Islam shares the same prophets, some of the same prophets as, you know, Christianity and Judaism. So it's not hard to see what happened. Somebody copied. So it's like, okay, are we supposed to believe that they just now, all of a sudden, Allah waited how many hundreds of years, a few thousand years to finally say, hey, I'm going to re finally reveal the true religion of Islam to Muhammad now after Christianity was established as after Judaism and so-called paganism and Catholicism or what have you. Now I'm going to give you all Islam because this is the true religion. And then, you know, Muslims who study will say, well, no, Islam has always been around. And they go back and look at the worship of Hubble, which they don't know. That's what it is. And the worship of these ancient gods that we see, the moon gods. And they think that that was the worship of, of Islam long ago when there is no proof to support that. So, um, but Islam is, is so much easier to disprove. And I talk about um, language and how the language was created to correspond with different religions. Like, you know, you had Hebrew for Judaism, English for Christianity, and of course, Arabic for Islam. And then you start doing the research and you realize, hey, nobody was speaking Arabic during the life of Muhammad during the time he's supposed to have walked, nobody was speaking Arabic. So how was the Quran revealed to him in Arabic and then translated into Arabic when during that time, nobody was speaking the language? The very first writings we see in Arabic is the Quran. We don't see no paintings in Arabic. We don't see no poetry or correspondence in Arabic before this time, which tells you that the language was created specifically for the religion. So again, got into all that when you start tracing the etymology or tracing the, let's say, the, the lingo of Islam back, it goes to Syriac. And then you see that the Syriac Orthodox Church, you look, you look them up, I mean, they had the garbs on before Islam. They had the symbolism before Islam. The fourth duty of the deacons of the Syriac Orthodox Church is called Korayo, to recite. There are reciters, which Quran means to recite. So we can see where this stuff starts to come from, Syriac. And then we look at the history and we see Abdul Malik basically forced this religion on the people, built the school, built the mosque, and forced Arabic. And, and it's so much we can clearly see that it happened to bring about Islam. And I talked about the war between the Catholics, or Rome, I should say. Rome and the Arabs that ended in the status quo antebellum after hundreds of years of war. And then just so happy that when that was over, we get Islam. So clearly we see who's in control of Islam and uh, what that goes back to. So it's not so much of just talking about Christianity and leaving out Islam because they're not talking about other religions I'm supposedly leaving out. It's just the fact that for, you know, me giving you guys the respect and saying that, you know, for those who are actually doing the research, it's not going to be hard for you to figure it out for yourself. It's just, you know, we don't have to, when we're talking about Christianity, we don't have to go into Judaism. I mean, we know, we, we know what that's about. Christianity includes the Old Testament. So we have to go into that and we can basically leave out Judaism unless you want to get specifically into the Talmud and the Pentateuch or what have you and just get into that, you know, Judaism on its own, which is a whole different beast. But it's still the same things we could point to as far as, you know, uh, talking against the religion. So I know it's a lot of um, it's a lot of Muslims who uh, who have questions and, and Islam is so strict in its belief system. And uh, a lot of people are not allowed to question. I mean, it's like I said, you go over there to Arab nations and the culture, the civilization is based on the religion. So it's like not hard for these people to you know, get into it, it gravitates towards the religion because it's life, it's daily life. So um, 
I can't really knock the people who defend Islam that was born in those countries, as I talked about before. So, you know, it's so many other religions that we don't talk about or don't really get into. There's ancient religions that um, it's, it's not hard for you to really figure out what happened with those. But we know three main religions that people follow, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Uh, that's what we talk about because the majority of the people follow those beliefs. Christianity uh, is just the main one, and it's what we grew up with, most of us, and it's the dominating religion. And, you know, Jesus is talked about all the time. Thank you, Jesus. We see crosses on so many people. And it's the religion that's condemning us to hell. At least with Islam, the Muslims believe everybody's going to hell. You're all going to spend some time in hell, all of us. So at least they believe that no matter what. But um, with Christianity, for them to be like, if you don't believe in this, you're going to hell. And you're sinning and everything that you do is a sin when it's the same for them. So it's just so much, so many moral holes, hilarious holes. <laughs> That's funny. But you understand, it's hilarious things that I post, memes I post on uh, Instagram that it just points out so much funny shit with Christianity. I mean, it's just hilarious. Talking snakes and donkeys. I mean, come on. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff, a lot of fun, funny stuff to poke at with Christianity, a lot of holes in the stories, um, a lot of problems that we could just really point to and say, really, really, y'all believe this shit? Y'all really want us to believe that this man walked on water, turned water into wine and raised the dead, but couldn't save himself from two pieces of wood? Uh, yeah, it's it's tough to believe that and believe that dude survived three days and a big fish and, uh, you know. The magical powers of Elijah and Elisha and Samson. And it's just, it's, it's, come on. So we can talk about that more because it's not hard to like really decipher that, that code, you know, because the Bible was a code. It's coded. It's a lot to take in. But, um, it's just, again, the Bible is one of the greatest books ever written. It just is. This is the most one of the most amazing books I ever touched. And a lot of people don't get it. It's just, yo, you spend time with the book and you read it, it's gonna blow your mind when you start doing the research. And um, that's where I confuse a lot of Christians because I talk so highly of the book, but then I also bash the book because that's what you're supposed to do. On the surface, the way they teach in the book is not the way you're supposed to follow it. You're supposed to really read the book and break it down. Once you do that, I mean, it just reveals itself in so many aspects of history and just the 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 esoteric teachings, the occult teachings that's, that's out there. It's in the book. And it's like, okay, the book's supposed to be so old to really harp on, well, a lot of stuff that we think is new, but it's not. But to really bring home a lot of occult points and esoteric points that we see in stories in the Bible. It's amazing. So it's not so much about me bashing Christianity only. I know people just got a problem when we talk about anything. Uh, it's just that, um, you know, like I said, Christianity is just the one that we get hit with the most and the one that most people follow. The one I get the most questions about is always Christianity. You know, having a lot of friends and family that's still Christian and people who choose not to let go to religion um, and that's the case for a lot of us. I, I talked about this before. A lot of you have boyfriends and wives and family members who cuss y'all out because y'all conscious, who laugh at y'all because y'all conscious, who try to disown y'all because y'all consciousness. I, I lost friends because of, you know, the consciousness I chose, you know, to, to follow, to, to have. And, um, you know, it's when they start seeing the success, then people look at you differently because it's really it's all about money. It goes back to money and so much shit. But when people start seeing you do things with your consciousness and, and make a difference with your consciousness and do big things, then they get a lot more skeptical and they look at you differently and they want to ask questions. So the advice I gave to a lot of you guys is don't let them outshine you. Don't let them outdo you. Kill them with success, plain and simple. These people who got these questions and want to antagonize you and condemn you to hell for being conscious, you kill these people with success because don't let these people 
outshine you and then say blessings. You know, it's blessings. I'm blessed and God bless me. That's why I have what I have. And I'm doing better than you because of the Lord. No one that's bullshit. You don't let them outshine you. Stay successful. If you're conscious, you should be successful. You should be doing something. Stop bullshitting with it. As I said, you know, the, it's just, I can't make that connection enough to knowledge and success and power and everything is right there. The more you know, the more you grow. It just changes your consciousness, having the information, the knowledge, having it, having it. It just, it changes you. So what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, when you watch my videos or anybody videos that's esoteric, that's knowledge, it changes you, especially when you, when it resonates deeply, which I heard that from a lot of people hit me about it. It changes you. So when it changes you, it changes the way you make choices and decisions. So those choices you make and decisions are going to be based on your consciousness and how you perceive things. So you start perceiving things differently because of your consciousness and the things that you 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 work on, you dwell on, the things that you choose to lend your time to. It's going to change the way you move and act and react to this world and just react to the things that's out there because now you're conscious and you have the knowledge of how you should be moving because your consciousness is going to let you see the traps and the bullshit. So do that, you know, learn as much as possible, get that knowledge and information and uh, watch how it changed you. And then it's going to, you know, seep into other parts of your life, make you more successful. And then when the people around you start to see that, they look at you differently. Then I got questions. They want to ask you stuff. Um, that's what it, that's that's what it's about. You know, uh, I talk about this all the time. How a lot of people they look at these celebrities, these rappers, what have you, and they see these rich and famous, thanking Jesus, and that sways so many people. And people get all fucking emotional and crying about the Lord and Jesus, the boo hoo, and all this and that because they they made this connection with this biblical character and their wants and desires and it becomes emotional and then they see these celebrities reach the pinnacle of success and everything that they want and give it to god and they think hey well that's the way to go you know i better be thinking jesus and giving lip service and bullshit and lying and then i'll get what i want like them or you know what have you so it's it's a lot of reasons why i talk about christianity because it's just so much seeped into our everyday life and we we are immersed in it and it's just a bunch of bullshit that we see that i don't want people falling victim to because of you know the lie you like the way they like it's just come on man the way they big up christianity as if it's this everything when it's bullshit it, the promises are not fulfilled the bible is telling you clear as day you pray for this stuff you'll get it and you don't the people I talked I talked about this the other day. Um, you had in Texas, Carolina, Florida, Nigeria, Jamaica. You had people shot and killed in churches in all those places and other places as well. So you know, we're like, if you can't get God's protection in church by praising His name, the fuck is the point? You know, oh God blessed me and gave me this car. God blessed me and gave me a job. But God, could, he, he took the time to give you a fucking car, but he didn't take the time to, to get somebody to stop this woman from running into school and shooting these babies, killing these kids. He didn't take the time to stop and save these people, with these kids from drowning and all kinds of crazy shit that's happening. But he took the time to get you a job. You lying, sinning ass. So, yeah, it's just it's so much. So, again, when you have people give that much time and attention to something that you know is bullshit, you're going to speak on it, especially when they're trying to condemn you for not believing in it. So, yeah, for those of you Christians, Muslims, what have you, who come to this channel, who come to my Instagram for whatever reason, talking shit, you know, you need to know. You need to understand, like, it's it's not about just having this notion or dedicating my life to condemning Christianity and talking shit. It's deeper than that. And if you took the time to understand what we really talk about as conscious people, you would understand, especially if you're black how it benefits you. You know, we, we're we doing this for us. 
We're doing this for truth. You know, the color shit don't matter. Truth does. But it's like, yo, if you black, what the fuck? I don't, I don't understand y'all. Like, we got this teaching. They taught us this shit during slavery. Now, I know y'all going to go and say, well, no, Ethiopian Bible, Ethiopian Bible. No, the Ethiopian Bible is not the oldest Bible. It's not the first Bible. It was copied from a Greek manuscript. That was given to the Ethiopians by Abergarama, a Byzantine royal, white man. He's on the cover of the book. Pay attention to who runs that church over there, the Abergarama Monastery in Ethiopia. It's white folks. So pay attention to who's behind these people. And you want to take it back to Africa, but you got to think about where it came from before that. The Greeks, white people. So it's not that we had it before that. Uh, of course, yeah, they taught us Christianity in the Bible before slavery, but that was to infiltrate. So again, you got to understand, even if you want to not discount, if you want to discount all that, that history, where's the promise of the Bible fulfilled for the slaves? So if they, if they was teaching us that, hey, Jesus saves, and this is the way to go, or what have you, the way the Bible is taught today, where the fuck was, where was the power? Where was Jesus? When he's, they raping and killing us and hanging us and burning us alive, where the fuck was Jesus? And, but he got you a car today. Come on. So, yeah, it's a lot I can get into. So um, it's it's just y'all got to stop bullshitting and understand. We're not trying to make y'all look stupid or we're not just talking about this stuff to be funny. This is serious shit. This is our life, our history. Like we we got to put the truth out there because it benefits us. It, it, and, and then how, how can you be a black Christian and then you're talking about racism? You're talking about, oh, the white man this and the white man that, but you're a black Christian. That's just fucking stupid. <laughs> and you don't even understand how. I mean, it just goes against everything you're trying to say. Like, you might as well sit there and agree with everything that's happening. Because if you're a Christian, then you agree with this government and what it's doing. Stop complaining about the government and your wages or what have you. If you're a Christian, because the Bible tells you to obey them and God put them in power and what they're doing is what God wants. The laws, that's what God put in place, what he wants. But y'all talking against it. Now, y'all don't know what y'all are doing because y'all don't read the fucking book. So it's tons of reasons why I get into Christianity because the hold it has on our people is ridiculous. And it's just a stupid hold because you, you motherfuckers not following the book. You're not living a Christian life according to what the Bible says is right before God. And you know you're not. So when you come to the comment section or to my Instagram or what have you talking that bullshit, I respond in kind sometimes because it's just funny to me. I'm like, damn, y'all. So come on. Y'all know damn well y'all not following this shit. Why well, come here and talk this holy shit when you know you about to go do some sinful shit, you know, right after. So yeah, quick shout out to James and Ben, Rachel and Helen. Um, these are Muslim and Christians who hit me up a lot. We talk and um, now these are people who actually converted, you know, based off my information. I said I would shout them out, shout them out because it just don't happen enough. A lot of people say, hey, why you don't debate? Because if, if the debate is not going to end with the person converting, there's no point. And it's like, OK, if, if, if I'm talking to a fucking wall, it's no point because one plus one is two. You're not going to keep telling me it's seven. It's two. It's common sense. It's, it's no point talking to a lot of these people. But you do get some people sometimes who is like so, you know, normal <laughs> in touch with reality that it's like, damn, like I've been deceived. That's what you should be getting upset about. You've been tricked. You've been fooled. And the reason why you want to hang on, most Christians want to hang on to the religious because they're scared. But then you get some people who say, this is some bullshit. What you said makes sense. I did my own research and here I am. And these are the people who did that. So yeah, big up to you guys. But um, yeah, I want to thank everybody who took the time to watch and um, everybody who's been supporting and grabbing the flash drive. I appreciate the support on that. Again, for if you, all you guys hit me up about iOS and, you know, Android phones, flash drives, flash drives for your phones, it's now available. Go ahead, link in the description, grab those. Make sure you guys register first, grab those. 
flash drives. Again, it's going to probably be the last week you can get both for that price. So take advantage this week, but also understand it's a flash drive that you can use for your computer as well as for your phone. So you have both options. If you want to put it in your laptop, you can put it in your laptop. If you want to put it in your phone, you can put it in your phone. You have both options. So yeah, take advantage of that sale. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the support. And I'll see you guys next video. Thank <laughs> you.